having a condition like epilepsy doesn't mean it's just taking a pill um, and then not worrying about it. There's a lot of attributes that go along with epilepsy and even our lifestyle and the way we take care of ourselves can have a huge effect on our conditions.
most of the time when people get epilepsy, they don't know why people get epilepsy. Um, uh, my case was one of the, the rare 30% cases where they knew the reason. But most people um, out of the blue can develop epilepsy and they cannot um, tag what, you know, or understand the reasons for it. In the remaining 30%, um, a lot of times, uh, head injury is one reason, brain infection, uh, brain tumor, and stroke, and sometimes it is hereditary in the family. Uh, the, the, all the brain functions, including feeling, seeing, thinking, human muscles, depend on electrical signals passed between the nerve cells and the brain. A seizure occurs when too many nerve cells in the brain fire too quickly, causing an electrical storm. Um, when people ask me what epilepsy is, I said the best way to think about it is when you have a su sunny day and, and everything is just so wonderful and bright and everything is functioning in your life perfectly. And then you think about epilepsy when you think of a concurrent uh, thunderstorm, you look out the window and see all these different lightnings pouring down. That's kind of how a, a seizure is, looks like in your brain, where you have seizures coming and you have electrical currents, abnormalities throughout the brain occurring. Um, there are many different types of seizures. There are many different types of seizures. Um, and, you know, it depends on, on the case and then the person. I'm not going to go through all the different types of seizures. Um, a person like me, for instance, um, I'm going to be the encephalitis that traveled throughout my brain. It had affected various different parts of the brain. So I, for one, could do a seizure where I could stop and stare at you, and you wouldn't. You might not even know that I'm having a seizure. I just get a lazy look in my eye and I'm just staring at you. Some people have a partial complex seizure where it's occurring in one side of the brain and they may twist and turn. They may just look at you. They'll be slightly aware of the seizure, but they won't, they won't be able to respond. And then you have some people that go unconscious. They fall to the floor. It's just like a brick. Their muscles tighten and they really don't have much recollection when they wake up. Um, they're very dazed, they're very confused. Um, so, you know, many people lose their memory loss, um, you know, but everything gets, gets back within a few minutes. They're, they're starting to function. They, don't, they may feel tired, but they quickly recover from these seizures. And a ground mole seizure is when the entire brain goes into a, a seizure and all different parts of the body go into a convulsion where the arms, the legs are, are shaking. Their eyes may roll back. Some of them may lose bile, their bowels, uh, drooling, chattering. Um, there's various symptoms that you know go with that. Um, the symptoms that may, you know, uh, that like we were just discussing, uh, symptoms that may indicate a seizure disorder: periods of blackout or confusion, um, occasional fainting spells, episodes of blank staring in children. Sudden falls for no apparent reason, episodes of blinking or chewing at inappropriate times. Sometimes when someone is diagnosed with epilepsy, someone may not realize that that person actually has a disorder at first. They may, because 70% of the cases are um, just occur out of no, for no reason, you know, someone could develop epilepsy dependent on the type of seizure disorder, type of epilepsy. They may just start doing things that for you and I seem to be abnormal but you don't really, you may not catch on to it at first, such as the focal seizures, just stop and stare, or just being, you know, days and confused. Seizures can last, you know, they can last for a couple seconds, or they can last up to 30 seconds. Some people, you know, do have severe seizures that can last a little longer than that. But every case is different, every person is different, and, every, and the, if you see somebody that's not acting appropriately, that has some of these symptoms, it could be epilepsy, and, and this is something that has to be drawn to uh, a doctor or a nurse, and it has to be drawn to a medical community for attention. Um, different things can cause a seizure when someone has epilepsy. It's sometimes it's very hard to determine, you know, why this person had a seizure. When you have epilepsy and you're having constant seizures, you can't really pinpoint why you had a seizure that day. It's very hard because many things can trigger a seizure. <clears throat> Mismedication could be one. Stress and anxiety, um, that's a, a big factor. You know, for people with epilepsy, if you get very high strung or upset, you know, they don't know why, but it does sometimes um, bring on seizures for people. 
um, hormone changes, when people go through um, uh, menstruation or they go through postmenopause, when their body is changing and the hormones, even um, during menstruation and ovulation, all these different changes can bring on a seizure. And for a woman, this is a constant battle if you have epilepsy because our hormones are always changing. If it's not ovulation, it's menstruation, and I think once you get through that whole cycle, you're going before you know it's menopause and then postmenopause. So it's a hopeless battle for a woman. But um, also uh, dehydration can cause um, could be a reason for epilepsy, for having a seizure, lack of sleep. Um, people don't realize that sleep is a very important factor for someone who has epilepsy. Any type of stress on your body can cause a seizure. And when um, sleeping, it, it, you know, a person with epilepsy needs that eight hours of sleep to uh, renew their body. Uh, photosensitivity, um, sometimes some people have, not all people with epilepsy, but some people do have light sensitivity, where they see the blinking or flashing lights, and that does something to their brain. It causes an abnormal reaction in, the brain, in their brain waves, and, uh, and puts a disruption in their brain, which can cause a seizure. Um, also, alcohol use and, and different drugs. Um, you know, some people, um, you know, they like to drink alcohol and stuff, but depending on the medication, you know, um, you could have different reactions. Every medication that you're on, it can give you different um, reactions to different things. Even when you're taking supplements, um, you have to be very careful uh, what you do, because every medication can interact uh, differently. Okay, for seizures. Um, you know, when it's very scary. You know, one time, um, you know, when I have a seizure, I would go unconscious most of the time. So I would never know what I look like. I would have a, a funny aura. I would, it's really hard to explain. It would be kind of like you feel a tingling sensation from your feet I would get all the way throughout my body. And then once I felt that tingling sensation hit in my head, I would go unconscious. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, I had no recollection of what happened. And you know, this, I would feel dazed, confused. Sometimes I would lose my memory, and I wouldn't know where I am, or I wouldn't. You know, I couldn't even call for help if I wasn't in my home alone because I couldn't remember anybody's phone number. Um, but uh, when someone does have, one time a, a young man um, had a seizure, and he recorded himself, and he put it on YouTube, and I saw this. I was very scared <laughs> because it, it is a scary thing to see someone have a seizure. It's uh, it's very scary, um, but it's uh, something that can, is very common. I don't think people, a lot of people, don't realize how common epilepsy is. Um, epilepsy happens uh, a lot. It ha a lot of people have it, and seizures occur a lot. Um, but when someone does have a seizure, you want to make sure that they're in a safe. Place. If you see them starting to get an aura, or if they just go into a seizure, you want to very comfortably put them in a safe spot where they're not going to get hurt. If there's a pillow or a jacket or anything that could kind of give them a soft, you know, um, surroundings. So if they are moving their body parts and their head is moving, you want to make sure that they're not hitting themselves. They don't get a concussion. They don't get severely hurt. Um, you know, there are myths that you know, you know don't put anything. You know, they can swallow their tongue, you know, of course that's a myth. You know, you just want to make sure that a person is very comfortable, they have any glasses or anything on them that could actually, you know, hurt them or press into them. You want to just pull it gladly, you know, just take it, take it off and just make sure that they're in a comfortable position. Um, if anything's sharp, you want to move it out of the way. Like we said, you know, um, the seizures are very quick, but anything can happen in that short period of time. Um, and even if you see someone starting to take a, a, a seizure and they're sitting down in a chair, you want to remove them from that chair because their body's stiffen. And when their body's stiffen and they shake to a certain way, that chair could flip, they could flip off that chair, they could hit their head, they can get a concussion. You know, I had uh, a long time ago, I had a seizure where I was in a chair and I had a partial complex seizure. I, I, my body stiffened so much and I moved so quickly you know, my husband once said to me, you know, you're, you're the, when you have a seizure, your, your body strength turns into a, two bouncers put together. Mm -hmm. He says it's an unbelievable amount of stress when your muscles stiffen and your body goes into a seizure and but you're having seizures from all parts of your brain. Now, I, I, I tightened up. I flipped off that chair backwards. I crashed into the, into the, um, into the uh, wall, and I ended up with a very nice concussion that lasted several months. 
I also had a time where I was I felt this seizure coming on, and but the problem is when before you have a seizure, your seizure your thinking is distorted. Someone might have a seizure, they're not going to go on conscious, but don't that person says I'm aware, I know what I'm, I'm doing, I'm okay. They're not. You know, you, you know what you what they perceive at that moment is not exactly what's going on. You know, because their brain is, is there's a lot of uh, abnormal brain activity going on in their brain, and their perception is off. So if they say I'm okay, help help them in a very nice, understanding way. Some people don't like the idea of being helped, especially people with epilepsy. They're they're you know I notice a lot of people you know they they I could do it. I'm fine. You know. So you can just, you know, psychologically say, I understand, but I just want to be there for you. And comfortably put them, make sure that you put them in a, in a, in a safe area. Um, also, if you don't know the individual, you may want to, you may want to just uh, see, if, you know, once they come out of the seizure, if they have any other conditions, um, if they're taking any other medication, because, you, you know, if they, if they look like they need medical attention, you're going to want to bring that up to anybody that um, is going to help these people. And then also, um, you know, if a seizure lasts more than five minutes, um, and these, this person has had seizures prior, you're going to want to get them. You're going to want to get the medical attention. Medical attention is not always necessary for someone with epilepsy. If they have a short seizure, they just need to relax, um, maybe take a nap. Um, you know, um, sometimes you know, depend on what their doctor tells them. You know, they may have to take a little extra dosage of medication afterwards. Um, understand the emotional aspect of a patient, like I just began telling you. Patients with epilepsy um, tend to have, um, you know, from speaking with different people, they tend to have a lot of anger inside. Why has this happened to me? Why, you know, um, what, you know, I don't understand, you know. They know that they have it, they know they're going to have it the rest of their lives. And a lot of people, you know, tend to feel very embarrassed to, um, you know, um, have an epilepsy, you know, if you are taking a seizure in front of a bunch of people, and then you wake up and you see all these people staring at you, you feel highly embarrassed. Even though you shouldn't, you do. Um, you know, uh, dealing with people uh, you know, with epilepsy, you might see possible outbursts, you know, leave me alone, I could do this, you know, depression. Um, but you know, the best way to, to deal with a patient is to say, you know, I may not understand what you're going through, but I'm here to support you and help you. Now, how does diet affect epilepsy? Although there's little evidence that uh, a balanced diet has a direct ep uh, effect on epilepsy, from my own experience, I know when um, I eat a certain way, uh, when I'm uh, de detoxifying my body, um, I feel a lot better, and I was always doing a lot better seizure-wise. Uh, my own, my own perspective, I believe that epilepsy and, and your eating your diet plays a big role on your epilepsy. The foods that you intake, that sodium, the high content of sodium. You know, these are things that um, contain water, can contain pressure in the brain, that can cause seizures. Diet has a very big impact, in my own opinion, on a person's condition. And if someone is looking to improve their epilepsy condition, they really should consider what kind of uh, diet they're consuming. A uh, healthy diet in fiber, leafy vegetables, fruits, nuts, and dairy products is always recommended. Um, it's very important to um, really uh, consider what you're eating, maybe even creating a, a food diary, um, seeing what you eat every day, and see if, uh, look at if the person's having seizures, when are they having seizures, what do they eat, what were they doing, and try to figure out maybe what their, their seizure triggers are. Um, you know, it's always good to stay away from foods that contain a high amount of sodium, like I mentioned, uh, to limit your caffeine intake, um, things like that. But uh, um, you know, even on grapefruit juice and pomegranate, uh, doesn't um, it doesn't trigger seizures, but they can have some reactions to certain medications, which could, uh, those reactions could trigger a seizure. Um, you know, mm -hmm. avoid processed foods. You know, we're in a go-go society where everybody's running around constantly doing things. You know, from one point to another, and it's very hard to say. You know, prepare a meal. You know, and you know, let's not go to Wendy's tonight. You know. Because it's very in this in this lifestyle, we don't know how to relax. There's too much going on. But you know, if you can, you know, uh, if you know somebody with epilepsy, you know, you could suggest different ways that they can maybe prepare their foods. You know, a day before. You know, because those uh, those uh, processed foods contain chemicals, which kind of 
could interfere with the functioning of the brain and also increase toxins in the body. And when you have uh, an increase of toxins in your body, your organs and your body have to work harder. And when they work harder, there's stress in your body, which could also trigger a seizure for someone with epilepsy. Uh, with exercise, um, exercise is very good for people with epilepsy. Um, most sports are safe for people with epilepsy. Um, you know, you have to really uh, know your limitations, what you can and cannot do. Um, you know, most people uh, have, uh, with epilepsy have no problem exercising, going to the gym, uh, you know, living a normal life. Um, you know, exercise is very good for the body and it's very good for people with epilepsy. Um, you know, it helps, uh, it helps relieve stress. Um, you know, it helps the functioning of, of, of the body work more appropriately and it really can help somebody. Um, you know, uh, with their, their seizures. They, you know, people with epilepsy doctors always, you know, encourage uh, exercise and getting new habits because they believe that it plays a vital role in, in the person's condition. Um, one of the top natural remedies for epilepsy is the ketogenic diet. This is a diet that's rich in fat and low in carbohydrates. They, uh, it's a low carb diet is recommended because a carbohydrate diet uh, rich diet increases the sugar load in the system and causes hyperactivity of the brain due to high energy availability, which can cause seizures in epilepsy patients. A diet that's rich in, in fat is said to decrease the spontaneous activity of the brain and keep neurons under control. They like to, you know, many people um, that I know in the medical field um, uh, like this uh, diet. Um, they try it on children. They seem to have more success on, with children than they do with adults. But I do know some authors that um, work uh, and write books in the medical field, and they are very strongly uh, an advocate for the ketogenic diet because they have known many people that have used the ketogenic diet, even as an adult, have had success with the diet. Now the H, um, the 5-HTP. This is another natural supplement <coughs> used to reduce anxiety and depression. This supplement reduces the serotonin level in the brain, which improves the overall health of the brain and reduces the severity and the frequency of seizures. It's widely used as a natural treatment for epilepsy. Um, it's a, a very popular supplement, and um, any type of supplement that's going to reduce anxiety or stress um, is very uh, a, a very positive uh, attribute for people with epilepsy. Because as I mentioned before, people with epilepsy tend to have um, uh, you know, stress tends to cause a lot of seizures. Everyone that I, I know that has epilepsy, when they're under a lot of stress and under a lot of pressure, they tend to have more seizures. Now, passion flower is a um, excellent um, uh, supplement. It, uh, it helps reduce anxiety and reduces the frequency of seizures. It has been traditionally used in uh, the treatment for epilepsy for uh, centuries. Um, it also is very good for people who have insomnia, who have trouble sleeping at night, or they're just high strung to begin with and you don't want to take Xanax, take some fat, um, passion flower. A couple of drops of passion flower can reduce any type of stress, anxiety, and help you relax. Now the Omega-3 on a regular basis, and they tend 
can set up healthy uh, metabolism and, and promote weight loss. So not only is it good for epilepsy, but it's it's good for uh, weight loss and other health reasons. I gotta get the drawer. Yes. <laughs> Now, um, people think sometimes that you have to take a, a supplement, and people spend a fortune on supplements, and you know it's become a big, you know, billion-dollar business. But the truth is too is that you don't always have to spend so much money on a supplement because a lot of the foods we have have all the vitamins we need. Like we we're just talking about omega-3 foods, you know, salmon, cod liver oil, walnuts, chia seed, uh, seeds, um, black seeds, tuna, white fish, you know, sardines, hemp seeds egg yolks, these are all things that have high levels of omega-3 um, components in them. Uh, many times, um, you know, uh, if you're not, you know, not looking to spend a fortune on, you know, supplements and, you know, turn to the, the different foods. Um, a lot of the foods that we have in our refrigerator and the spices we have can also be a very helpful component, not for only just for epilepsy, but for everything. Um, you know, like I said, your diet has a big impact, and if you're looking at epilepsy to help people control epilepsy, or even to just help people with other conditions, you know, um, there's different foods with, with different um, different ingredients that can actually help heal the body. Magnesium, foods with rich in magnesium, like nuts, soybeans, and beets, also maybe uh, also can help, um, possibly help treat epilepsy. Magnesium forms compounds that are responsible for the effective functioning of the brain and the nervous system. And like I mentioned, um, you know, we have spinach, flax seeds, broccoli, basil, dill, you know, um, pumpkin seeds, almonds, pine nuts, watermelon seeds, you know, um, sesame seeds. These are all things rich in magnesium um, that you can find in your own refrigerator. Vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is, an effect, is very effective in reducing seizures. It's beneficial um, to the, the central nervous system and for effective functioning of the brain. Uh, this is also another great vi uh, vitamin um, to use. And also, if you're looking to hide those grays, you take some B6 and some B12 in it, and it reduces the, uh, the uh, grays. Uh, you, you won't get grays as quick as you normally would. Of today. 
Now, if you ever realize you can just sit down and you can keep worrying today, you worry and worry. By the time you come home, you're feeling so drained. What did you accomplish by worrying about this? Did you find a solution? Did, 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 you, did anything get better by worrying yourself to death? No. So, you know, sometimes we have to, you know, do what's best and realize, you know, for every problem there is a solution. It might not have come, it might not come today, but it will come eventually. And we just, you know, it's, it doesn't pay to stretch yourself. It's not, it's not doing you any good. And people with epilepsy, you know, have to realize this, um, you know, just like everybody in this room does. Sometimes we drain ourselves for no reason. You know, if, if there's, uh, it will, you know, you'll find your way out eventually. But just worrying about something is just draining you. It's not finding the answer. Uh, ways to reduce stress. Um, when a stressful situation is unavoidable, you know, make sure you're doing your best to get enough sleep and, and to take your seizure medications on time. You can tell a patient because sometimes people get so wrapped up in the problem that they stop caring for themselves, and that's something that you know occurs in any condition and even in ourselves. You know, you get so wrapped up into something that all your priorities get out of whack, and you know, um, you know, you have to make sure that you know when people tend to get overwhelmed, you know, that, that they realize what's important to make sure that their first priorities are being taken care of. Um, you know, uh, other ways is to, to avoid the negative energy, um, to find a way to diffuse the situation. Um, avoid people in your life that uh, cause anxiety or anger. When you have a patient that has seizures and, and they're um, constantly dealing with people um, uh, you know, uh, in their lives that cause them anxiety and cause them stress, you may want to ask them, are there people in your lives that are causing you this pain and, and this anger? Sometimes, you know, we have to really think, and think uh, you know, everyone in my life might, may not be very good for me. Because sometimes, you know, the negative energy around us uh, just worsens. When you take uh, negative people and, and negative energy and you, 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 and you kind of push them out of your life and you focus on the positive, you notice that your life tends to get better. That positive energy kind of draws on you. And then you start looking at how people in your life and people outside that you know that are positive, what they do to overcome problems. And you know, and then you start applying it to your life. Where if you're next to a negative person and they're constantly giving you negative energy, you know, all of a sudden you, you might realize when you come home, you're not in a very good mood. You, you, some of that negative energy is actually bumped off you. So if you do have a patient or even in someone in your life, if you have constant negative energy, you know, you gotta really look and say, you know, maybe I need to make a change, or maybe my, I need to tell my patient in a nice way that they need to make a change because it's not helping them or, or their condition or their life. Um, one of the things that we're talking about reasons why exercise is so good because it re reduces stress. A lot of times, you know, you may notice if you ever go to the gym or you exercise at home when you're stressed out, you know, by working out, you kind of release some of that stress. And, you know, that's also a good reason to also, if you have to you know, someone with epilepsy or even yourself, you know, if you're stressed out, you know, get some of that stress out of you by doing some exercise. <coughs> And also, um, ways to reduce stress is also to relax. You know, um, yoga, tea, you know, Pilates, massages, pat mats, you know, um, even different breathing techniques for meditation. You know, these are different ways to, to help you uh, so you can actually, you know, relax. I'm a good person for yoga. It's, uh, it's a very, uh, very effective, and it, not only is it, is it good for your health, but it also helps reduce stress as well. Also, you know, it's good to pace yourself and take breaks. Um, you know, you have to realize that every, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, you need to, like, really, you know, take breaks and, you know, rejuvenate yourself. Um, and also, people with epilepsy, you have to make sure that their stress levels are low, and they need to, have, you need to teach them how to rejuvenate and take breaks as well. Um, also, like you mentioned, to set priorities in your life. You need to, um, you know, uh, Look at what, what is important in life. The patients you need to tell your patients, you know, help them realize what's important, and also um, and to focus on and to let go of the rest. Uh, you know, uh, real, the priority is, is, a, is a, an important thing, and also talking to people. You know, if someone is bothering you, or you know, someone with epilepsy is getting stressed out. 
um, you know, they may need to seek help. Sometimes people don't know how to reduce stress in their lives, and sometimes it's, it's necessary to, you know, seek medical attention or seek counseling, and, you know, um, a, a good thing. Um, support groups are excellent also. Um, you know, if someone has epilepsy and they're having a very hard time dealing with their epilepsy, you may want to suggest um, going to a support group like the Epilepsy Foundation, where they have sub-support groups where they can join, they can meet other people who have the same disorder, and they can learn from each other. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, um, have it, you know, one of the main things of coping with epilepsy is, is don't sweat the little things in life. And for every problem, there's a solution. You know, a lot of people worry about things that are, are meaningless. To them, it's not meaningless, but it's a small problem that can be fixed. Um, you know, sometimes we need to really focus on what's important and focus on those things and not worry about the little things in life. You know, um, one thing I also, you know, try to explain to people is that, you know, you can't change the past. Some people dwell on the past, you know, but you can't change the past. You have to focus on the present and, you know, and work towards, you know, creating a constructive and positive future. You know, um, every, everything happens in life for a reason. Sometimes you don't understand why. Uh, but everything I truly do believe happens for a reason and it strengthens our lives in many ways. Also, um, the three keys for transforming your life is, you know, for a person with epilepsy, uh, not be in denial. Uh, you know, many people don't want to accept the fact that they have epilepsy. They need to uh, accept who they are and they need to love themselves because it's not going away. So anybody with epilepsy or any condition, you know, they have to just accept it and they have to move on. Um, you know, it's just, there's no way about it. And, you know, you have to accept what you're able to do and what you cannot do. Uh, you have to accept the past without denying it or discarding it and learn to forgive yourself and to forgive others and not to assume that it's too late to get involved. Um, you know, we all, we all have limitations in life. Sometimes we don't, you know, want to have limitations. We want to be able to do a lot of things that we can't. But you know, sometimes you have to have limitations. You have to create a lifestyle that's suitable for yourself. You know, if it was up to me, I would love to jump out of a plane and go bungee jumping. And for someone with epilepsy, it would be the wisest choice. <laughs> um, and, and last but not least, positive thinking is the, the key to coping with epilepsy. I never look at the negative side of things. Just like anybody, though, we all fall into our little ups and downs. We get depressed about things, and you know, we may, you know, but most of the time, I try to focus on, on the positive key points. I know that I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't have epilepsy. I'd be somewhere in Manhattan sitting down martinis, you know, working in some kind of high corporation and, you know, and living a lifestyle. Probably that wouldn't be the best choices, but, you know, um, I had goals and dreams. I worked in NBC uh, for a while until a producer saw me have that seizure, and then I lost my job from it. So, you know, um, you know I, I was on a, on a road and a pathway, and I was trying to accomplish my goals, what I thought was, you know, the ultimate life, but, it didn't work out that way. And so what that's saying is that not everything happens the way we want in life, but when things do happen, we just have to learn to accept it. We have to learn to move on and then take what we have and make the best of it. Because like I said, everything happens for a reason. And you know what? And if everything in life is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So with that said, you know, um, a lot of these things that I was talking about, we talked about epilepsy today, but it could apply to your own life as well. But with life, you know, life has its challenges, and uh, you know, and these are messages that you can get across to patients that have conditions, not just with epilepsy, but any condition or even things that can apply to your life. And I'd like to thank you very much for giving me the time to speak with you guys. Yes. I have two questions. My first question is, with the different levels of epilepsy, are they allowed to drive, or do they have to have a special license, being that they could go into the seizure at any time? Every, um, every state has different laws, but in certain states, um, you have to be seizure-free for a certain amount of time. And like I think in New York, you have to be seizure-free for six months. I think in New Jersey, I think it's two years, I think it is, but every state is different. And then once you've been seizure-free, um, you have to get approval from your doctor saying that you're well enough to drive, and then you have to go through um, approval from the motor vehicles department, and then once everything is done, You'll, you'll be able to drive and you have to constantly report back to your doctor. So All right, my second question is, you were talking about um, eating seeds, like chia seeds and hemp seeds and the other seeds, the flax seeds. 
do you get the same benefit from the seeds if you sprout them? So you eat bean sprout seeds, like hemp bean sprouts or chia, things like that? Or do you have to chew them as a seed? I think, um, I think when 